be sure to check out my friend Mason's shop at nomadautoimports.com. He's also on Instagram and Facebook as Nomad Auto Imports. Support him, check out his site, see if there's anything you're interested in. Hey guys, Yoda Code 43 here today with another tour and drive for you. Today I've got the chance to check out this 1996 Nissan Skyline GTST 25T Type M. This is an R33 chassis code Nissan Skyline. Check out the cool little S on the key. Looks like the one that we used to draw in high school in the 90s. <laughs> so first we'll do a little walk around to the car talk about the things, the features on it, and uh, talk about the general condition of it. I'll let you know the price, and we will go for a drive. So the R33 Skyline was a continuation of the R32, obviously, um, just the next number, naturally. The R32 was the uh, Nissan GTR I did a review of a couple of weeks ago. This is the next generation. This ran from late 1993 through 1998 in Japan and other parts of the world. They made them with everything, all sorts of different engines as small as a 1.8 liter four cylinder, which I believe was the CA18. You could also get an inline six diesel, the RD28, turbo or non-turbo. That would be the slowest one of the bunch. Automatics and manuals, and then all sorts of different versions single cam and twin cam, turbocharged and twin turbocharged of the RB engine from two liters to 2.6 liters officially with some tuning companies doing 2.8 and 3.0 liters as well. But this is a GTST 25. So this has the RB25 DET single turbo uh, twin cam straight six. It's 250 horsepower, or thereabouts, 235 pound-feet. You can tell this is really just an evolutionary style up from the R32 as well. Uh, the core parts of the car are the same. The suspension is mostly the same. You know, all the systems pretty much carried over. All the engines pretty much carried over. It was just a more modern 90s look for the car. And this particular one is being offered by... Nomad Auto Imports here in Flint, Michigan. There's a link to the for sale ad, or at least a link to the page of the car down below, assuming the car hasn't sold by the time this video actually comes out. Now, this car was originally a medium gray colored car, but was repainted at some point to what looks like black mostly on camera but if you catch it under the right light which this is not the right light i'll have to uh, take a few pictures of it outside but it's purple purple metallic it's very cool biggest thing i like about these cars is their taillights they're very three-dimensional they have a very sunken in appearance make sure to check those out here shortly too and then this one has a couple of aftermarket modifications. So as far as mods to this car, well, if you saw when I briefly glanced by the interior, it has an aftermarket steering wheel, as well as in the top right corner on the dash there is a boost gauge. It has a handmade um, bride shift boot. Looks like it was made from the fabric on one of the seats or the backpacks or something like that. Pretty cool has some uh, carbon fiber wrappings on the dash. You can see down around the shifter there. This car was originally an automatic car, but was swapped over to a manual transmission. It's a five-speed manual. The exhaust is fully stainless. I already mentioned the dark purple paint. Actually, you can kind of see it a bit better here in the fluorescent light. Pretty cool. This one has Blitz coilovers on it as well. A cold air intake. Uh, has a stress bar under the hood. I'll show you that as well. 
then a pair of horns by this company called Proud that I had never heard of before. Right here in the front. And then it also has an oversized aftermarket Blitz intercooler. And definitely some sort of uprated clutch, which it sounds like is by the brand STR. It kind of functions, eh, it's, it's like not quite a race clutch, not quite like a six puck, but it's a bit on offish. There's a little bit of, uh, of movement in there where it'll work normally, but you know, not exactly the best for street driving, <laughs> at least not for me. It actually has a carbon fiber wrapped gas door here as well, you can see. Biggest thing I like about Skyline coupes and sedans I've seen is they come with rear windshield wipers. There are so many cars in North America that would benefit from a rear windshield wiper. Granted, now we're only getting, you know, trucks and SUVs for the foreseeable future. <laughs> So all of these Skylines have these side markers in Japan. And then here's your GT badging on both sides. There's actually brand new tires on this car as well. Stock style 16 inch wheels. The wiper blades are, are new as well. And then actually it has a fiberglass hood on it as well. You can tell it's very lightweight. It looks like it's designed in the style of like a heat extractor where normally you could have holes cut in down here to pull heat out. So here, while we're at it, we'll, we'll go take a look under the hood. But I'll tell you the basics of the interior here first while I'm here. Cloth sport bucket seats, very similar to uh, an S14 chassis car. Actually, the whole look of this is kind of like an S14 with a couple of of characteristic changes in the front and rear end. Seats are very comfy. They fit an average sized American like myself. <laughs> I'm 5'10", but I got longer legs. I have no issue fitting in here though. Here you can see the carbon, the carbon wrappings on the dash a little bit better. And here's a little more detail on the steering wheel. It's got the uh, racing stripe to help keep you centered. It actually has a Nismo horn button, which is pretty cool. Especially if it's legitimate. Nice original Skyline floor mats on both sides. Looks like they also did the uh, the ramp on the door here too. Very simple, nothing really to note. Both door panels are in good condition. The dashboard's in nice shape. No ripples or bubbles or anything like that. And then you have the RB25 is only a 7,000 RPM red line. I think it'll go a little more than that, but at least that's what the gauge shows, a 7,000 hard red line. Whereas the RB26 in the GTI I drove before was, I think it's an 8,000 hard red line, but you typically shift at 75 or something like that. 180 kilometer speedo, which is 112 miles an hour. That was the standard issue speedometer in Japan. This car has 84,000 original kilometers, which is about 52,000 miles, which is crazy low even for Japan. I mean, this is a 25-year-old car. Aftermarket touchscreen stereo in here. Carbon fiber weighted shift knob on it as well. And then on the dash you have your defrost hazard switches. You have a clock. And actually this rectangular switch over on the right side, I believe, is to raise and lower the antenna manually if you so chose. Otherwise, it defaults to coming up with the radio. Actually, this one has one of the uh, broad highway mirrors in it as well. And this one has a glass sunroof. The GTR did not have that. Headliner's in good shape. Back seats are about what you'd expect. There's a fair amount of room. I could probably sit behind myself, but no real need. Doors sound healthy. So here it is, the RB25DET. 
twin cam 24 valve, and then a bit of a different intake shape than the RB26 you saw in the GTR, because this one's not uh, independent throttle bodies like that is. And here you can see the Blitz coilovers in each of the shock towers, and you can see the original medium gray color this one was. And here's the uh, special pod filter intake that's on it. Otherwise, everything's pretty readily accessible in here. Really not too bad to work on. Everything's well organized. And your Blitz branding on the intercooler as well. I don't know if it's just a decorative thing or if it has a functional purpose, but instead of having the grill in this car, they have this lip on the edge of the hood painted purple to match the car. I don't know, maybe it's just to act as like an eyebrow. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Not at all. <laughs> Fog lights and signals down on the bumper up front. The car is exceptionally clean underneath. There's a couple of photos I'll throw in here as well of that, so you can see. Here, the pop of the trunk door and the gas door, respectively. Nothing special to note inside the gas door. And then the trunk it has trimmings all around and it has a stress bar in the rear. I'm not sure if that's standard to the skyline, it may be. The battery actually lives behind here, uh, whereas in the R32, the generation before, it was up under the hood in the corner. Smart move putting it in the back to help balance the weight better. And then this car has uh, Nissan's HICAS system, H-I-C-A-S, which is uh, their, basically their four-wheel mechanical electrical steering system. So the rear wheels will turn a few degrees in either direction depending on the driving conditions in order to help with cornering or maneuverability in a parking lot, etc., etc. Oh, and there's the power antenna. Okay, so now we'll check out the lights real quick before we go on a drive. Green lights on the dash, some accent lighting down below. low glow of the tail lights, which is cool. You see the cornering lights here. You see the side signal repeaters here as well. LED lights in the corners of the headlights, regular bulbs in the bumper. Might even be LED low beams, but I think they're HIDs. But as you can see, all the lights on the car work. Just wanted to do a quick walk around in the sun before going out for a drive because color comes to life a bit out in the sun. It still looks very much black. It's a very, very deep purple. I don't know how close to midnight purple that was available on these cars this actually is, but it's a very cool color. Very subtle. Running out of sunlight, so it's kind of hard to tell you, but there is there is some flake in there. All right, now we're gonna gear up and go for the drive. Okay. Now we're gonna go for a ride in this R33 Skyline, hopefully before it rains. There we go. Very cool metallic sounding starter. camera today. That is a difficult clutch to use. Clearly, if I just stop it. Yep, those are some dark clouds coming. 
Hopefully I'll beat it back. Ah, I already like the steering wheel, the leather grip, the racing stripe, very cool. The boost gauge is also very cool out of the dash here. I got some crazy hair today, don't mind that. Boost gauge in the dash, boost gauge on the dash. Got plenty of fuel, just wait for the green.
your straight six, I mean, it's a high performance car, 250 horsepower, you know, uh, being 25 years old, I imagine it's, that's probably what you're going to expect is 20 average. But yeah, the driving dynamics are fantastic. Solid, solid driver. Try to take it on the air here. Oh yeah, we have cold air conditioning. Works great. Get one little chance to do a little run up here as soon as I get over the intersection. Right here looks like the place. Otherwise, see you next time.